Spark plugs. Yeah, they're boring. They can also help you make horsepower. They can also help you not make horsepower. They're also not time machines. We're gonna cover a whole bunch of topics to make sure you have the best horsepower gain possible after you procharge your vehicle. Starting with heat range, one of the most common things. You're like, yeah, I know, procharge car, gotta run a colder plug, but what does it do and what does that mean? Okay, heat range is the spark plug's ability to pull heat out of the chamber or away from the tip. Pulling that heat away means less chance for detonation, which is good. That means you can make a ton of power safe. But if you have too cold of a plug, then you have idle misfires, lack of horsepower, drivability problems, and a whole thing you don't want to do with. So a little bit colder, good. A lot colder, bad. Now, Yes, if you're making like 2000 horsepower in a drag car that only gets run for 30 seconds, totally different deal. I'm talking about street cars here, making like a thousand horsepower and less. Next topic, let's talk about gap. Not the gap that you're gonna put on your competitor thanks to your Pro Charger kit, but the gap at the tip of the spark plug. Now there's a great way to gap your spark plug. There's a good way to gap your spark plug. And then there's a please don't ever do that way to gap your spark plug. Starting with great. They make a little tool. You can find these all over the internet. You screw the spark plug in and then you nice and easily close the gap from the ground strap to the electrode. Next up, you got your common gapping tool. Usually people like slide it in there. You push down to get it closer, slide it back in there. If you got it too tight, you can pry it out etc etc the worst method is to slam your spark plug on the ground eyeball it and say that's good enough you want all of these gaps to be very even and the last thing you want to do is slam a spark plug on a hard surface you're talking about porcelain and copper and all kinds of stuff you will break it whether you can see it or not it's broken if you drop a spark plug on the ground it's junk get rid of it throw it in the trash, grab another one. Because if they're broken inside, you're gonna get misfires, bad horsepower, and a whole bunch of not good. So why are we closing the gap? Well, you just added a pro charger, which makes boost, which adds cylinder pressure inside of the combustion chamber. Now, when that spark has to jump, it's hard with all that extra pressure because we haven't really added any more coil voltage, right? So what we do to ensure that it fires a spark every time is to close down the gap, making it a little bit easier for it to jump from the ground strap to the electrode. So the size we recommend for this on most street cars making 600, 700, 800 horsepower is about 0.028 to 0.032. Now there are some cars that need a little less gap, uh, like Coyote Mustangs, so if they're making big, big power, like a thousand horse, they run a very tight gap, like 0.018 to 0.022. Yes, that's small. Because again, if the spark doesn't happen, there's no horsepower. So too big of a gap, misfire, really too small, not too much of a problem, but you want to make it as big as you can to make sure that the spark is as large as possible to light as much of the air and fuel mixture on fire. The style of the spark plug tip usually isn't something a lot of guys talk about because like Coyotes and Hemis and LSs all pretty much run like a standard style tip. The Hemis run a different style, but this is about all you get. However, when you run a small block Ford or a big block Chevy, there's lots of different cylinder heads. There's so many cylinder heads, it's crazy. Each one of those cylinder heads has a different location for the spark plug, depth of the spark plug, position in the combustion chamber, etc. That means the tip is very crucial. How far does it stick out into the air fuel mixture? A common misstep we see is people will run a non-projected tip plug in a head that required a projected tip. So what happens is even though they got the right heat range, they got their gap set correctly, they get terrible misfires, terrible horsepower, and barely can keep the thing idling. Like it's always fouling plugs. And that's because 
The tip was too far back in the cylinder head and was never in the air fuel mixture good enough to keep it running. So probably required an extended tip plug and you can see the massive difference. Again, there is a conventional plug that's kind of in the middle. So again, refer to your cylinder head manufacturer and refer to your spark plug manufacturer on what the best plug will be for you. While we're on the topic of tips, if I don't mention this stuff, I'm gonna get comments in the thing in the bottom. Yes, there are some fancy spark plugs out there with like multiple ground straps, no ground straps, ground straps made out of bedazzled jeans from the 90s. These things could be pure magic. I don't know, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about conventional spark plugs. Moving on. Tip material. This is a thing we get a lot of questions about because people are concerned that an iridium plug or a platinum plug is too hot and it's gonna hurt their engine. Mm, not the case. That's not why this stuff was invented. Here's a copper plug over here. Great plug, still works good in a supercharged vehicle. Just know that the copper plugs are gonna wear faster. You know, you're gonna probably get 10,000 miles out of a set of these, maybe 20,000 if you're pushing it. And that's fine, you'll know. If you start getting misfires, swap them out. Platinums, double platinums, and iridiums, well, those were designed by manufacturers to go like 100,000 miles without a spark plug change. They do that because the platinum and the iridium is very, very strong. Since it's so strong, the tip is also very small, which makes it very easy for the spark to jump the gap. Again, nothing wrong with an iridium plug in the proper heat range, same with the platinum, obviously the same for the copper. So that's it. You can run these, no problem. You get a long life out of them. You can run the coppers too. You just gotta change them more often. Breakup problems is the next thing we're gonna talk about. And I'm not talking about your relationship. I'm talking about what a resistor does in a spark plug. Yeah, this is never ever talked about and it's very, very important. Now, say you just put on a supercharger kit and you bought some spark plugs at the racing department of your auto parts store, you slapped them in there and now your radio sounds funny, like there's a siren going rear, rear, or you got a data logger that won't log or your engine's breaking up and you're misfiring or just all kinds of weird stuff happens chances are you might have bought a spark plug without a resistor. So the one in my hand over here does not have a resistor. The one in this hand does have a resistor. Can't tell them apart. You gotta ask the manufacturer if it has a resistor or not. Now, anything that's a modern car with a radio, EFI system, any data logging, anything electrical on board, you're gonna want a resistor style plug. If you're old school carbureted and you don't have any electronics on board, cool, you can get away with a non-resistor plug, although really no disadvantage to using a resistor plug. Again, use the correct plug, get the right results. Before we move on to reading a plug, these guys, very important. So if you're changing your spark plugs often on your car, every time you tug on these things, you run the risk of breaking the connection inside of here. So they're cheap. I mean, 45 bucks, 80 bucks a set, if you're talking OEM wires, every once in a while, it's worth it. If you're changing plugs, slam a set of wires on it, and then you never have to worry about misfires. Time machines, VHS, recording devices, all of those are not spark plugs. Spark plugs are not going to record everything that happened in the last month of you driving it. So if you send in a picture of your spark plug to a tech department and ask them, what does this plug say? They don't know. Uh, they're, they're not going to know how long that was in a car, what you were doing with the car, what fuel you're running, et cetera, et cetera. To read a spark plug properly, you need lots of brand new spark plugs and you either need to be on a dyno or a track. And the way you do it is you put a brand new spark plug in that's never been run, do a dyno pull and shut the car off at the very top of the pull. Then you can read the spark plug and it's gonna tell you what just happened right before the engine was shut off. Same thing, if you're at the racetrack, you put a fresh plug in, you make your hit down the track, shut it off when you're going through the traps, and in the sidelines, pull the plug out and it'll tell you what it did right at the end of the run. 
That way you can check for your timing strap, your fueling, etc. Now, how to read all of that? I'm not gonna go into it today. There's so much information on the internet that'll teach you how to read a spark plug, and that spark plug is gonna tell you exactly what was going on in the combustion chamber. That wraps up the boring adventures of a spark plug. And if you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to, like I said, reach out to a spark plug manufacturer. They're actually awesome to work with. They're super great. Or reach out to our tech department as well, and we will help guide you any way that we can. Other than that, we hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.